Next case is number three. 45 year old female with a three centimeter kidney mass. All right. So there's we, kidney, all right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's kidney, um, and then we also see that this mass is right below it. Uh, looks pretty well circumscribed. Yeah. Can can't get the whole thing in here, but it's it's like this nodule growing right on like the outside of the the kidney, right? Right. Like here's like the here's the capsule of the the kidney, and it was like just a little like marble sitting on top of it, or a little golf ball on top of it. And then the next thing I notice is that there's a component of mature adipose tissue. Good. And there is also this component that is the uh, pink uh, component of this, which I believe is potentially um, a, a muscle component. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it looks like pink and spindled, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I was looking at uh, was, are there any vessels, <laughs> any dimorphism? Anything like that. Um, Let's see if we can find some vessels. There are some vessels in here, but there's a particular vessel pattern I wanted to show, and I don't remember if this one has it or not. We'll look right for a minute and see. Probably there. That'll work. Yeah, so kind of a thick walled vessel here. Right. And it kind of looks like this smooth muscle stuff is kind of coming right off the wall of that vessel, right? It's like kind of wrapping around the edge of the vessel and seems to be kind of growing out of it, doesn't it? Right. So it seems like you probably know what this is. What would you classify this as? An angiomyolipoma? Yeah, good. This is a nice example of angiomyolipoma. And what, uh, do you know what kind of family of tumors this belongs to? It's related to some other entities. And they're called pecomas, P-E-C-O-M-A, perivascular epithelioid cell tumors. And it's kind of a weird name because there is no such thing as like a perivascular epithelioid cell. That's not a normal cell type. But sometimes these cell, these types of tumors make epithelioid cells that wrap around vessels. So um, angiomyolipoma is kind of a special, unique type of pecoma. The other pecomas occur elsewhere in the body and have kind of a wider range of features and can look very different from this. But the type that occurs here, usually right next to the kidney and occasionally other places in the, in the peritoneum and retroperitoneum, is angiomyolipoma. And um, I think it's an important tumor to know about for a few reasons. One, you can easily confuse it with other stuff. You can see fat and maybe some scattered atypical cells and it's retroperitoneum because these can get quite big. And you might think it's a well diff liposarc or something, right? right? So, because it's got a fatty component. So, um, the, uh, the things that you pointed out is that there's three components. There's mature adipose tissue, there's vessels, and then there's this very unique appearing smooth muscle. This does not look like regular smooth muscle, right? What is, what's different about it? It's the cytoplasm. Instead of being like real dense pink cytoplasm, like, you know, smooth muscle elsewhere, the smooth muscle in picomas, in, in angiomyolipoma particularly, tends to have this kind of, I'm going to flip the condenser to let you see, this kind of granular pink to it. It's like a grainy pink appearance, and it's often also cleared out. So there's kind of this clear, pale, granular, something like those words. And in each case, it's a little different. But this one is particularly like chunky, granular pink stuff and, and pale cytoplasm. And I feel like that is very characteristic of angiomyolipoma. And in fact, the other types of picoma often have some degree of clear cell, pale cell, granular cell appearance to them. So um, elsewhere in the body. So that, that's a good thing to pick up on. Um, and then what, a, what kind of immunostains? Uh, these have a very unusual immunophenotype. Did you happen to read about that? Yeah, so these ones always like, I feel like are going to trick me somehow. Uh, but it's the melanocytic markers uh -huh. that are positive. So it's HMB45 positive, mark one is positive. Mm -hmm. And then you can also obviously stain the muscle component, which, which would be uh, MSA or calponin or SMA. And I guess there's... Sometimes even Desmond, too, actually. Yeah. yeah, so it's really weird, right? Like, what the heck is going on with these tumors? I don't know. They're very strange. And uh, even the other picomas that don't really look muscle-like tend to co-express their myo-melanocytic 
differentiation. They have myoid markers like actin or desmin, and they have melanocytic markers like melan A, MART1, um, whichever name you like, and and or HMB45. And they don't always have all four of those. It can be in different different um, components. It can be very focal um, as well. And um, to tell it, if, well, it doesn't really look like melanoma or melanocytic, you know, um, or really makes sense to be that where it is and how it's growing. But also, oftentimes they are S100 and SOX10 negative. Although some studies have found that some pecomas, I don't think so much angiomyolipomas, but I, I may be missing some literature on that. But some of the other types of pecomas can sometimes express S100. So that can be a potential pitfall. So um, anyway, that's a kind of a strange thing. And that's a thing that's common for all of the different pecoma family members that they have myoid markers and, and melanocytic markers. They tend to co-express both which is very strange. So, and there is a, what was the other question on here? Uh, something about, is there a syndrome that these sometimes occur as part of? Yes, some, yes. sometimes there's a syndrome. And what is that? Uh, tuberous sclerosis. Right, so some patients with these have tuberous sclerosis. You can also have them sporadically too. Um, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then, so these, uh, this is a nice example of angiomyolipoma and I think I've seen like I said I've seen some really big ones and one lesson I learned when I was a resident not just for angiomyolipoma but in general is that when you see a large retroperitoneal mass always think of the possibility maybe it could be coming off of the kidney and when you see a large renal mass always think of the possibility maybe it's actually a mesenchymal retroperitoneal thing that's growing close to or around the kidney because occasionally on imaging really large masses it can be hard to distinguish where the mass is originating. So, and you might otherwise not put renal tumor in your differential for retroperitoneal mass and vice versa. So I thought that was pretty good because I saw some pretty massive things in the retroperitoneum, some things that swallowed up the kidney, like liposarcomas, and I've seen some large kidney tumors that they didn't realize were coming from the kidney. So, so I thought that was pretty good. But I think that real take home is that cytoplasm of angiomyolipoma is so unique. It's just like it's such an unusual grainy pink pale cytoplasm I find really, really kind of fascinating. All right, angiomyolipoma, good.